You, you out there, are you a racist? I think you're racist. All white people are, says Robin D'Angelo. In the white mind, black people are the ultimate racial other. And Ibram Kendi says. Every person, every idea, and every policy is either racist or anti-racist. Both best-selling authors reach lots of people. No justice, no peace. It sounds good to educate people about racism, but. The way we're being encouraged to think hurts black people. John McWhorter, author of Woke Racism, says this new approach to race is not scholarly, it's toxic, like a cult. We ask for forgiveness from our black brothers and sisters. I've been amazed. I have lived during a time when I could watch a religion form. The heartbeat of anti-racism is confession. A new religion has arisen, and more to the point, that it's a shitty religion. But this is a clearly fact-based belief. There is racism. Oh, there certainly is. But he says the problem with these messages is that they claim racism explains just about everything. White Americans have more because of racism. And racism is why on tests. Black people receive lower scores than, than whites and Asians. In the past, civil rights leaders said, well, how can we make it so that black kids are better at the test? Today's idea is eliminate the test. These tests, which are denying access. You take away the tests in order to show that you are not a racist because the tests have a way of making black people unhappy. That it is somehow unreasonable to expect black kids to use analytical thinking in a rigorous way. This is a new way of thinking. It's a religious way of thinking. One that harms young black people, he says. Because if adults tell students they're victims, they're less likely to study hard. It also ignores other aspects of black culture that don't stress getting good at those tests in the way that aspects of, say, South Asian immigrant culture clearly does. So does Caribbean culture, Nigerian culture. Those people come here and deal with the same racism that everybody else does, and yet they make the best of the worst, which simply means that so could black Americans. Kendi calls all race disparities systemic racism. Kendi is dim. You can call him dim, but he's winning the hearts and minds. If he does, it really is a national tragedy. At the moment, Kendi and D'Angelo are winning followers and money. D'Angelo charges big speaking fees. Companies donate millions to promote Kendi's anti-racism research. But while the media called D'Angelo and Kendi two leading scholars, that you're America's leading scholar on anti-racism, their actual ideas rarely get much critical scrutiny. Both refuse to debate opponents. Yet their books are now recommended reading at schools, corporations, even in the military. That idea is quite charismatic. It is something that gives a certain kind of pleasure because it makes it seem like you've got one answer to a bunch of things that look disparate and difficult. But all disparities between white people and black people are not due to something unfair that was driven by whites. It seems odd to me that this is happening now when I would think there is less racism in America than there ever was before. There's more intermarriage, there's more opportunity for minorities. Why now? To fashion a victimization identity is a luxury available to people who aren't really suffering that much. In America today, there are advantages to being a victim. Yes. It gives you an emotional balm to be treated as this victimized person. The problem is that it's anti-Black. One example. There is a disproportionate number of suspensions of Black boys in schools for violence. Now, the Kendian position is to say that that must be racist because Black boys aren't the only ones. That disproportion must be because of a stereotype of Black men as violent. But the truth is that the data makes it very clear that Black boys do commit more violent acts in the schools. If you don't suspend those boys, the violence is being perpetrated against other Black kids. So a lot of what he's talking about leaves Black kids and Black people in the lurch. Well, you give people a lot to think about, Ibram Kendi, so bravo to you. If Kendi wins, we all lose. Yet, as I argued before, he's winning the hearts and minds. I'm not sure if he's winning. All of life was taking place on Zoom for a while. 
I think that as we come out of the pandemic and we're less bored, less anxious, I suspect that a lot of the extremes that we saw are going to start retreating because there's going to be a pushback. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe so you can see our next one. Thank <laughs> you.